Hello students, welcome to Sainiketan online biology classes. So this is the same chapter that is a human reproduction. So in this session we are going to cover the whatever the topic we covered in the last uh, few sessions. Clear? In last session we covered the menstrual cycle, before that one we covered the gametogenesis and before that one the, uh, the reproductive structure of the both male and female. Yes. So this is the NCRD textbook. So now we are going to line by line. So first introduction. So as you are aware of the sexual reproduction, yes. So we are going to line by line only. So as you are aware of the human are the sexually reproducing and viviparous. So here human beings are sexually reproducing and they are the viviparous. The reproductive event in the human include, the events of the sexual reproduction include means, first one is a formation of gamete that is a gametogenesis in sperm in the male and ovum in the female. The sperm is a male gamete and the ovum is a female gamete. Yes. The transfer of the sperm into female genital tract is called insemination and the fusion of male and female gamete is called fertilization leading to the formation of zygote. This is followed by the formation of formation and the development of the blastocyst. Yes, and the attachment to the uterine wall is called as implantation. Yes. Next embryonic development is called gestation and the delivery of the baby is called the parturition. So you have learned these reproductive event occur after puberty means a 6 to 7 event they have mentioned. First one is a gametogenesis. In male it is called the spermatogenesis, in female it is called the oogenesis. After gametogenesis transfer of the male gamete into the female genital tract that is called the insemination. After insemination, both the male and female gamete fuse united that is called the fertilization leading to the formation of zygote which is a first cell of next generation. It is followed by the formation and development of the blastocyst, yes, so and its attachment to the uterine wall that is called the implantation, yes. After implantation, embryonic development occur and gestation, of gestation and delivery of the baby is called the parturition, clear. Yeah? You have learned these reproductive event occur, occur after puberty that is when the male and female attain the sexual maturity. Yes. So there are the remarkable difference between the reproductive event in the male and the female. For example, the sperm formation continue even in the old man. But formation of the ovum ceases in women around the age of 50 years. Let us examine the male and female reproductive system in the humans. Yes, this is an introduction where the major event of the sexual reproduction they covered. And one difference they told in the male, the formation of the gamete take place even in the old man. But the formation of the ovum ceases in the woman around the age of 50 years means the reproductive phase of the human male extend from the puberty up to the old age. But in female, the reproductive phase of the female is in between the first menstrual cycle and the last menstrual cycle that is in between menarche and menopause. Yes. So this is the first page of this chapter. Now come to the second page. Uh, in the first page only the male reproductive system is given. So just go. The male reproductive system is located in the pelvis region. In figure 3.1 we are going to cover. It includes the pair of testis along with the accessory ducts glands and external genitalia. Yes. So this is a male reproductive system figure and its description. So first we will read the description then we will cover the figure. Uh, now the testes are situated outside the abdominal cavity within a pouch called the scrotum. The scrotum help in maintaining the low temperature of the testis that is 2 to 2.5 degrees Celsius lower than the normal internal body temperature. So this is a scrotum. Yes, it is shown here. The testis is located ab outside the abdominal cavity. This is the abdominal cavity which is present outside this one. Yeah. So what is the significance of scrotum means 
it help in maintaining the low temperature that is 2 to 2.5 lower than the normal internal body temperature. If the body temperature is 35 or 37, yes, the scrotum temperature is 35, clear? So this is required the spermatogenesis, necessary for the spermatogenesis. In adult, each testis is oval in shape with the length of 4 to 5 centimeter in width, uh, length is a 4 to 5 centimeter and width of 2 to 3 centimeter. The dimension is given. The testis is covered with a dense covering. Each testis has a 250 compartment called the testicular lobules. So in board activity we covered. So testis means, so this is a testis. So outside it is covered by the three membrane, tunica vaginalis, tunica albuginea and tunica vasculosa. Tunica albuginea enter into this testis and produce the testicular lobules, yes. So ultimately each testis consists of 250 compartment that is called testicular lobules, yes. In this figure it is not given one. So this is a diagrammatic sectional view of the uh, male pelvic shown the reproductive system. Just see this reproductive system. Uh, here the testis is present in the scrotum. From the testis, excessive reductor arise, that is a vasa deference. Vasa deference I will encircle the uterus, uh, urinary bladder and conduct uh, this, combine with the duct of the seminal vesicle, turn it ejaculatory duct. So ejaculatory duct again combine with the urethra, so then form the urethra. The urethra pass into the penis, clear? So the male genital organ is a penis which is little bit enlarged toward the tip that is a gland penis and it is covered by the foreskin, yes. Along with this one here they named as the seminal vesicle is a gland is present then after prostate gland is present here this is a prostate gland then bulbo urethral gland is shown downside here, yes. So this is a male reproductive system. Now come to the internal structure of the testis. So when you take the each lobule of the testis, uh, each lobule contain one to three highly coiled seminiferous tubule. The each testis has two to 250 uh, testicular lobule. In each testicular lobule, one to three highly coiled seminiferous tubules are there. So this is a testicular lobules inside. Inside that one seminiferous tubules are there. So each seminiferous tubule is lined on its inside by the two types of cell that is a male germ cell called as spermatogonia and sartori cell. So when you take the testicular lobule inside one to three seminiferous tubules are there. So this is a testicular lobule. So this is a seminiferous tubule inside two types of cells are there. One is a male germ cell that is called the spermatogonia. Second one is a sartori cell. Yes, the male germ cell undergo meiotic division, finally lead to form a uh, sperm formation. From this spermatogonia, sperms are formed. While the Sarto cell provide the nutrition to the germ cell. The function of both cell is given. Male germ cell or the spermatogonia undergo meiotic division, produces sperms. Sarto cell will provide the nourishment for the developing germ cells. Yes. Uh, the region outside the seminiferous tubule is called testicular interstitial space, yes. That contain the blood vessel and interstitial cell called as a lydic cell, yes. So the space which is present between the seminiferous tubule is called the interstitial space, contain the small blood vessel and interstitial cell or the lydic cell. The lydic cell synthesize the secret the testicular hormone called androgen. This lydic cell produce testicular hormone that is a androgen. Other immunological component cell are also present. Immunological means so some component they produce which will provide the immunity to the body also. So what is the content of this paragraph means? So when you take the testis due to the intrusion of tunica albuginea, testicular lobules are produced. Each testicular lobule contain one, two, three seminiferous tubule. Inside the seminiferous tubule, two types of cells are there. 
मेल जर्म सेल दैट इज अ स्पर्माटोगोनिया सर्टोली सेल यस मेल जर्म सेल और स्पर्माटोगोनिया अंडर को मियोटिक डिविजन प्रोड्यूस द स्पर्माटिड्स विच ट्रांसफॉर्म इंटू स्पर्माटोजोआ सर्टोली सेल प्रोवाइड द नरिशमेंट यस नाउ कम टू द मेन सेल द लिडिक सेल और इंटरस्टीशियल सेल सिंथिसाइज द हारमोन कॉल एंड्रोजन अंडर इम्यूनोलॉजिकल अदर इम्यूनोलॉजिकल कंपोनेंट सेल आर ऑल्सो प्रेजेंट नाउ इफ यू ऑब्जर्व दिस फिगर हियर कंप्लीट डिस्क्रिप्शन इज शोन जस्ट गो थ्रू दिस फिगर सो ये कम द टेस्टिस सो द टेस्टिस इज प्रेजेंट हियर सो दिस इज अ स्क्रूटल सैक यस सो इन साइड अदर नेम्स आर यून रेटे टेस्टिस वैसा एफ्रेंशिया एपिडेडेमिस यस इट लीड इन टू द नेक्स्ट पार्ट दैट इज अ वैसा डिफरेंस Vasa difference combined with the duct of seminal vesicle, then it form the urethra, common urinogenital duct. Here only prostate gland and bulbo urethral gland open into this one. Yes, so this re, uh, testicular lobules also there. So this is a urinary bladder, this one, uh, in which ureter opens. Yes, so up till here, up to the vasa difference. it will conduct only the semen when the vasa deferens combine the duct of seminal vesicle from that point onwards it form the common urinogenital duct that is called the urethra clear the the muscular copulatory organ of the human male is called the penis so the tip of the penis is little bit enlarged that is called the gland penis covered with the foreskin yes so the part of this reproductive system again here it is covered now interstitial cell we covered now what male reproductive system made up of the male reproductive system have the accessory ducts which include rete testis vasa afferentia and epididymis and vasa deferens so this is a two or three marks question name the accessory duct of the male reproductive system means rete testis vasa afferentia epididymis and vasa deferens the seminiferous tubule of the testis open into vasa afferentia through the rete testis means seminiferous tubule first open into rete testis rete testis open into the vasa afferentia hmm? vasa afferentia leave the testis and open into the epididymis yes now the rete testis vasa afferentia these are the intratesticular ducts one epididymis is present outside the testis clear uh, epididymis located along the posterior surface of the each testis epididymis lead to vasa deferens that ascend to the abdomen and loop over the urinary bladder it receive the duct from the seminal vesicle and open into urethra as a ejaculatory duct clear means this is a vasa deferens yes to that one duct of the seminal vesicle join so from this point one this is a ejaculatory duct this ejaculatory duct again join with the duct from the urinary bladder and from that point onwards it called the urethra clear so uh, now ejaculatory duct these ducts store transport the sperm from the testis to the outside through the urethra so these ducts means rete testis vasa afferentia epididymis and vasa deferentia this one and uh, ejaculatory duct and urethra yes so urethra so these ducts store and transport the sperm from the testis to outside through the urethra the urethra originate from the urinary bladder and extend through the penis it is a external opening called the urethral meatus the opening of the urethra is called the urethral meatus so this is about the uh, male reproductive system where the only accessory ducts we covered accessory ducts clear so if you observe the figure so rete testis vasa afferentia epididymis vasa deferentia then ejaculatory duct then urethra these are called the ducts of the reproductive system male reproductive system 
In next page, they have shown the the sectional view of the seminiferous tubule. If you observe this one, so these are the seminiferous tubule. Clear? So these are the seminiferous tubule. Inside, two types of cells are there: spermatogonia and Sertoli cell. The space which is present between this one, so this is the interstitial space, this area. So where the special cells are present, that is the interstitial cells. They are shown here, interstitial cells. So this interstitial cell also called as a lytic cell. Lytic cell produce the androgen. Clear? Sertoli cell will provide the nourishment for the developing spermatozoa. So this is the sectional view, cellular level one. So now come to the next paragraph. Uh, the penis is a male external genitalia. The penis is a male external genitalia. It is a muscular and erectile part one. It is made up of special tissue, help in the erection of the penis and facilitate the insemination. The enlarged end of the penis is called the gland penis, covered with the folded, uh, loose fold of the skin is called the foreskin. So this is the external genitalia where the, the description of the penis is given. So when you observe the penis, the penis has a special structures in board work we have studied. So it consists of carpora vasculosa and carpora uh, this one cavernosa. So these are the tissue whenever the uh, blood flow in this one they became uh, erect clear. So that is why the human male uh, copulatory organ is a erectile in nature. The last paragraph of this one is a description of the accessory glands. So when you take this one, accessory gland means it includes paired seminal vesicle, paired prostate gland and paired bulbourethral gland means seminal vesicles are two in number, prostate gland is only one and bulbourethral gland also pair gland. Secretion of these gland constitute the seminal plasma which is rich in fructose, calcium and certain enzymes. The secretion of bulbourethral gland also help in the lubrication of penis. Yes. So this topic we already covered. The seminal vesicle is a gland where the it produces the fructose and the, some other enzymes. The prostate gland also produces the uh, calcium, inositol, fibrinogen, then uh, prostaglandin like this one, enzymes one. Then pro bulboerythral gland is a functionally very important. This will secrete the pre-semen, clear? So ultimately the secretion of these three gland and sperm is called as a semen. Is this clear? So this is a description given in the NCRT textbook which is related to the male reproductive part. Is this clear? Now come to the female reproductive part. So I think you have understood. So almost we have covered this uh, topic in detail in the board work only. Now come to the female reproductive part. The female reproductive part. Uh, the female reproductive system consists of pair of ovaries along with the pair of oviduct, uterus, cervix, vagina and external genitalia located in the again pelvic region. So it consists of pair of ovary, pair of oviduct, uterus, cervix and vagina all are single in number, external genitalia located in the pelvic region. These parts of the system along with the pair of mammary gland plus mammary gland are integrated structurally and functionally and support the process of process of ovulation, fertilization, pregnancy, birth and child care. So when you compare the complete functional response to the male and female reproductive system, the male reproductive system is responsible for only production of sperms that is a gametogenesis and second function is a insemination. The remaining functions of the sexual reproduction activity means in female reproductive system gametogenesis occur that is called the oogenesis. 
after insemination fertilization occur in the female reproductive system only after fertilization implantation that is pregnancy giving birth to anyone and parental care the child care is there so which include the lactation and feeding the young one so the complete responsibility is to the female reproductive part only that's why structurally functionally physiologically and psychologically the female reproductive system is a little bit well built and it is uh, it shows a little bit complexity now come to the ovary part so the ovary are the primary sex organ the ovaries are the primary sex organ in male testis is a primary sex organ that produce the female gamete that is a ovum and several steroidal hormone what is the main function of the primary sex organ means they produce the gametes and hormones if you take the testis in the testis sperms are produced and androgen or the testosterone is produced in the testis only if you take the ovary it produces the female gamete plus steroidal hormone means ovarian hormone which include estrogen and progesterone estrogen is produced from the follicular cell progesterone is produced from the corpus luteum yes the ovaries are located one on each side the lower abdominal clear in the abdominal cavity only each ovary is about 2 to 4 cm length connected to the pelvic wall and uterus by the ligament so uh, the ovary is attached to the the uterus by the uterine ligament and the broad ligaments are there the each ovary is covered by the thin epithelium which enclose the ovarian stroma so now it is a internal structure of the ovary each ovary is covered by the epithelium so which is a germinal epithelium just below the germinal epithelium tunica albiginea is there and internal structure is called the stroma yes so now we are going to cover the ovary structure also the stroma is divided into the two zone the peripheral cortex and central medulla yes this is also we covered in the board work activity so means ovaries are the primary sex organ they produce the ovum and they produce the ovarian hormone such as estrogen and progesterone yes so it is attached to the ovarian wall and the uh, pelvic wall with the help of the ligament one so the ovary when you take the transverse section it is covered with the germinal epithelium just below that one tunica albiginea is there the central stroma is divided into cortex and the medulla so this is a ovary description now come to the next part this is a female reproductive system so just observe this clearly so the female reproductive system here the actual ovary is not shown in this figure you observe this one straight way they have given the uterus one the ovary is not shown here so this is a uterus clear so to that uterus these are the fallopian tube and this is a ovary yes so two ovaries are there so these are the ovary these are the fallopian tube or the oviduct this is a uterus uterus open into cervix this is cervix region cervix region open into the vagina yes vagina open outside to the vaginal orifice so this is a female reproductive system means this is a female reproductive system which is present in between the urinary bladder and rectum so this is a digestive tract and it is a excretory part in between that one female reproductive system is present clear so the description about this figure again given so we'll see this figure later on so this is a diagrammatic sectional view of the female pelvic showing the reproductive system only uterus cervix and vagina is shown here so ovary they are not shown now come to the oviduct this is a figure which is mostly asked in the examination so this is a diagrammatic sectional view of the female reproductive system in which most of the parts are labeled one so the ovary part we covered now come to the accessory ducts so 
when you come to the ov duct or the fallopian tube ov duct or the fallopian tube uterus and vagina constitute the female accessory ducts so ov duct uterus and vagina constitute the accessory ducts of the female each fallopian tube is about 10 to 12 cm from here to here it is a 10 to 12 cm long extend from the periphery of ovary to the uterus this is a ovary from this point up to the uterus it is extended one the part closer to the ovary is funnel shaped infundibulum so this is a infundibulum which is a funnel shape yes the edge of the infundibulum possess the finger like projection called fimbriae which help in the collection of ovum after ovulation so from this ovary secondary oocyte releases this secondary oocyte enter into the infundibulum with the help of the fimbriae yes so when you observe this figure so this is a female reproductive part so description about this is given in the next page just go through this figure one mm. yes so this is a figure the ovaries are in pair one is right side one is left side it is held together with the help of the ligament ovarian ligament and the broad ligament yes uh, inside that one the cortex and medulla is there inside this only the the production of ovum take place exactly in the 14th day secondary oocyte release from this one so alternate manner one month from this ovary next month from the another ovary the ov duct the accessory duct of the female reproductive system include fallopian tube uterus this is a complete uterus and vagina so these are the accessory duct when you take the fallopian tube fallopian tube again divide into the infundibulum ampulla and isthmus infundibulum is little bit funnel shape structure ampulla is little bit wider part and isthmus little bit narrow part so ultimately fallopian tube is a 10 to 12 cm long which open into the uterine cavity the uterus is again made up of different parts this is a fundus this is a cornua this is a body and the last part is a cervix so fundus cornua body and cervix so these are the major part the uterine wall is again made up of the three layers perimetrium myometrium endometrium perimetrium is outermost which is a protective in nature myometrium is a central part made up of the smooth muscles endometrium is a inner part which is uh, undergo periodic changes the endometrium undergo periodic changes in the menstrual cycle this is a glandular the endometrium is again divided into two part clear strata functionale and strata basalis so this is a three layers of the uterine wall now uterine cavity open into the small passage that is called the cervix clear so which is guarded by the two orifices so internal orifice and external orifice in between that one this canal is there that is a cervical canal yes so this cervix open into the last part of the female reproductive part that is a vagina clear so this is about the female reproductive part here only we covered the accessory duct now come to the uterine part so what they are given now so this is a the part of the ov duct is called the ampulla after infundibulum it open into ampulla the wide part of the ov duct is called the ampulla the last part of the ov duct is called the isthmus so infundibulum open into ampulla ampulla is a wide part ampulla open into the isthmus which is a narrow lumen and the joint to the uterus one only three parts they given the uterus is a single and it is also called as a omb it is also called as a omb the shape of the uterus is like the inverted pear it is supported by the ligament attached to the pelvic wall here also ligaments are there for its support the uterus open into the vagina through the narrow cervix uterus open into the vagina uterus open into first cervix cervix open into the vagina yes 
the cavity of the cervix is called the cervical canal which can make the connection between the uterine cavity and the vagina clear which is along with the uh, vagina form the birth canal yes this is the main part uh, cervix and cervical canal and the vagina collectively called as a birth canal through which the baby will come outside the wall of the uterus has a three layers of tissue the external thin membrane is perimetrium middle thick layer of the smooth muscle is a myometrium the inner glandular layer is called as the endometrium perimetrium myometrium endometrium that line the uterine cavity endometrium is glandular which is a uh, undergo periodic changes one yes so endometrium undergo cyclic changes during the menstrual cycle while the myometrium exhibit the strong contraction during the delivery of the baby now what they given so endometrium undergo cyclic changes the endometrium undergo cyclic changes during the menstrual cycle and myometrium exhibit strong uterine contraction during the delivery of the baby yes uh, the every labor has a specific function one so this is about the uterus now come to the external genitalia of the female reproductive system so external genitalia include the figure is not given uh, there are figure related to this one we covered in the board activity the female external genitalia include mons pubic labia majora labia minora hymen and clitoris these are all part of the external genitalia yes you have to remember mons pubic is a cushion of fatty tissue covered by the skin of the pubic hair okay it is present in the groin area only labia majora is a fleshy folds of tissue which extend downward from the mons pubic and surround the vaginal opening these are the broad fold so these are the labia majora yes labia minora is a paired fold labia majora finished now labia minora so these are the fold of tissue under the labia majora so these are also fold present inside the labia majora yes the opening of the vagina is often covered partially by the membrane called as a hymen so this is very very important so inside uh, this this area the area present between the labia minora is called the vestibule so this is a urethral opening this is a vaginal opening yes the here the vagina is often covered by the partially by the membrane called the hymen the vagina is covered by the hymen the clitoris is a tiny finger like structure clitoris it's a tiny finger like structure which lie at the upper junction the clitoris is present here this clitoris uh, this is a clitoris yes so labia majora this is a labia majora labia minora so this is a urethral opening so this is a vagina and this is a clitoris yes clitoris now the major point now try to understand this one what they given uh, the hymen is often torn during the first coitus the layer which is present on the vagina clear partially which is covering the vagina one is called the hymen which will torn during the first coitus or intercourse often it can also broken by sudden fall or jolt the insertion of the vaginal uh, tampon the active participation of the some sports like the horse back riding cycling so this hymen will tear in some women hymen persist even after coitus that's why what is the conclusion the presence or absence of the hymen is not reliable indicator of the virginity or the sexual experience one yes so this is about the external genitalia of the human female reproductive system so 
Apart from this, female reproductive system also include the extra structure that is called the mammary gland. This is a figure of the mammary gland. The description about this is given in the next paragraph. So, what they given? Just read the first, then we will cover the figure. So, the mammary gland, the functional mammary gland is characteristics of all female mammal, functional mammary gland of the female mammal. The mammary gland is also present in the male, but they are not functional one, but in female they are functional, yes. The mammary glands are paired structure which is present in the breast one. They contain the glandular tissue and variable amount of fat. So, the mammary gland made up of the adipose tissue, glandular tissue and the muscles one present near the uh, chest region only. The glandular region means that is a uh, modified sweat glands only. The glandular tissue each breast divide into 15 to 20 mammary lobes containing cluster of cells called alveoli. This each memory lobe made up of many alveoli. The cells of the alveoli secrete the milk which is stored in the cavity lumen of the alveoli. The alveoli open into memory tubules. The tubules of each lobe join to form the memory duct. The memory tubules open into memory duct. Several memory duct join to form the wider memory ampulla, yes, which is connected to the lactiferous duct through which milk sucked out. So, almost 5-6 names are there. What they are given names? Uh, it is composed of the adipose tissue, glandular tissue and muscles one. So, each uh, memory gland is made up of 15 to 20 memory lobes inside alveoli is there where the milk is secreted. The milk is passed through the alveoli to the memory tubules. Memory tubules of the each lobe join to form the memory duct. The memory duct has little bit wider part is called the ampulla where the milk is stored for the time being and it come outside through the lactiferous ducts which is present at the tip of this memory gland. So, this is a figure of the memory gland. Yes, just go through this one. What they given? So, so here memory lobes are there. So, these are the memory lobes. Inside alveoli is present. Yes. So, alveoli is a functional unit which is present inside this one. Uh, alveoli, yes, alveolus which are present inside. This will produce the milk which is collected with the memory tubules. Memory tubule open into memory duct. Memory duct has a little bit wider part shown here that is called the memory ampulla. That will open into lactiferous ducts which is open at the tip of this breast. It is called the nipple. The nipple is covered by the, the dark color pigmented area that is called the areola. This is the areola. Yes. So, this memory gland is surrounded by the fatty adipose tissue. The amount of fatty tissue will decide the size of the the breast one. Now, so this is about the memory gland. So, up till here we covered the only the reproductive structure of the male and female. Is this clear? So, this is the content which is given in the text. Clear? Uh, just go through the NCIT textbook thoroughly. Again, we will meet in the next video in that we are going to cover the, the pre-fertilization event which is nothing but the gametogenesis which includes spermatogenesis and the oogenesis. Yes. So, till that take care. Goodbye. Have a nice day.